What is sexuality? WHO 2014 states sexuality refers to the sexual preference of an individual and to whom they are sexually attracted to. So what are we going to be looking at? In order to understand sexuality from both male and female perspectives, we have explored the effect one's sexuality has on their acceptance in sport. We have looked at homosexuality both in the past and the present and what challenges they have faced and face today. The 1980s was seen as a particularly challenging time for the homosexual community. As Anderson 2014 says, it was a time of political backlash and religious fundamentalism. People had a particularly low view upon homosexuality. It was displayed in the Telegraph that almost two thirds of the British public opposed same sex relationships during this time because they believed that they were morally wrong. How can athletes, both males and females, feel accepted within sport when it was difficult to be accepted by society? DLAT 2014 also says that homosexual men and women were perceived by Britons as deeply other or sinful and were widely regarded as outsiders. If this was the opinion of most during this time, then how could have men or women have been truthful about their sexuality when they are surrounded by such hatred and negativity? Those who are in power also showed a particularly questionable view upon this matter. In 1987, a speech was made by Margaret Thatcher to her Conservative Party's annual conference. She began in saying, It is the plight of individual boys and girls that worries me most. Too often our children don't get the education they need, the education they deserve. Children who need to be taught to respect traditional moral values are being taught that they have an alienable right to be gay. All of those children are being cheated for a sound start in life. The following year, the first new anti-gay law in over 100 years was introduced. Section 28 forbid teaching in any school that homosexual relationships were acceptable. This law remained on the statute books in England for 15 years. During this time, there weren't any role models within sport. There wasn't anyone to give confidence and courage to sportsmen and women. For example, the visibility of female homosexuals within sport gradually came about slightly earlier than male sportsmen, but not in a positive way. During the 1980s, two successful and well-known tennis players, Billie Jean King and Martina Navratilova, were outed by the media. Festival 1996 goes on to explain that both these sportswomen faced problems, setbacks and prejudice. Unfortunately, due to this, King was then asked to resign her pres presidency of the Women's Tennis Association because of sexual perversion and what was then described as a lesbian witch hunt. Because of this, both these sportswomen lost a mass amount of money their sponsorships and their advertising. Although some hope came from this travesty because both King and Navratilova became activists for lesbian and gay rights, showing that they would not be defeated. What could have been an opportunity for role models in sport actually became a possible threat towards others. Would sportsmen and women want to risk coming out and potentially lose their career because of their sexuality? This may not have been the reason that it was common and homosexuality wasn't seen or particularly known of within the sporting environment. Two athletes were punished for their sexuality and athletes were frightened of not being accepted. I have used Justin Fashionu, the first openly gay professional soccer player from the 1980s who was black and Thomas Hitzelsperger from 2014 who was white and also another professional football player as two comparisons regarding the media coverage and challenges that they have received from revealing their sexuality to the public. Justin Fashionu did not receive positive media attention and had to deal with a number of challenges once he therefore once he revealed his sexuality. In an era that he played as football, he was also a victim of monkey chants and constant racial abuse. But not to mention, Margaret Thatcher, Prime Minister at the time, was strongly against homosexuality. During his playing time, it simply would not have occurred to most followers of the game that a soccer player could actually be gay, let alone built like a heavyweight boxer who possessed such physical strength and power like fashion he did. Accordingly, researchers shown that organised competitive team sports are highly homophobic in Western cultures and this is exactly the response Fashion received, including spite from fans and managers, leading him to change football club almost every six months. However, in terms of the media, Justin accepted a tabloid newspaper's mega payoff and gave them everything they wanted to hear about his sexuality. Large amounts of homophobic abuse led to him take taking his life in 1998 after he was accused through the media of raping a 16 year old boy. In comparison to this, Thomas Hitzelsberger, ex Aston Villa and German international football player, announced he was homosexual after his retirement from the game aged 31. He states due to the media he could not have come out during his career. 
However, he has experienced greater positivity, unlike Fashionu, who announced his sexuality during his career and therefore faced huge amounts of distress. It is important to remember that society has changed since Fashionu announced his sexuality, as Heckma in 1998 states, gay men who are seen as queer and effeminate are granted no space whatsoever in sport. In comparison, as Anderson 2009 states, the environments within sports teams are far more inclusive towards homosexuals during an era in which Hitzelsberger came out. Football fans have also become, become more liberal as society has changed. There are still fans who still cling to ill-conceived personal judgments of people based on their colour or sexuality, but these numbers are becoming fewer and fewer. Finally, Hitzelsberger left England before making the announcement as he still feels homosexuality is not taken seriously enough in the game. However, from respect, from the respect he has received as players, it can be argued he would not have received the same negative response that Fashionu received previously. From these two players, it is seen how homophobia is still a massive political issue as well as a social issue, and this needs to be addressed at grassroots PE and sport within schools. Issues within sexuality and sports can sometimes be internal, relating to thoughts of others impacting your actions and choices. This is known as a term called homohysteria, originally introduced by Eric Anderson. The definition is the fear of being thought homosexual because of your behaviours that may be typically considered uncommon for your gender. Influences include what sport one may choose, and sometimes sport media of body image, which is stereotypically correct to an athlete. Hargreaves 1994 states that media reinforces heterosexuality when it comes to female athletes. For example, these images you can see here, Maria Sharapova is sexualised through her appearance, whereas Ronaldo is both his appearance and his physique. To add, if looking at tennis, you tend to see Maria Sharapova has been in the media much more than Serena Williams, based on her physique and appearance rather than her achievements. Um, Homer hysteria can be commonly found within women's sports such as football or rugby. From a 2008 report from the Women's Sport and Fitness Foundation, it was quoted that some girls avoid certain sports that are seen unfeminine. In relation to the concept of homo hysteria, an example being of a, a female football team, Anderson 2011 builds on this as he explains there is a fear of being socially marked as a lesbian due to their openly homosexual teammates. However, this is not found among men in sport after a teammate comes out. Martina Navratilova was interviewed by the Guardian newspaper in 2010 when she was asked why she thinks there are fewer out gay sports and icons 30 years prior to her coming out. She adds that women have to prove they're straight. She then goes on to say that how a journalist would never ask a male athlete if he was gay unless he were a figure skater instead of a football player. As an ex-figure skater himself, I had an interview with Dale Williams, who is the president of the LGBT Society at St Mary's University, about his personal experiences. I remember playing football for a while, but stopped due to the way I ran the way I held myself throughout the game being constantly scrutinised. When I started ice skating, I didn't skate like the other males. It was even mentioned a few times at competitions, both local and international. The term different to them instantaneously made me gay. But I thought how small and narrow-minded they were. Pictured is footage of Stonewall Football Club, the UK's first openly gay football team and reigning European and gay games champions. Stonewall Football Club successfully broke down preconceived ideas surrounding homophobia and contradict many theories in regards to masculinity, femininity and the perception of being gay. Men with masculine dominance are able to construct their identities by sculpting their bodies with hegemonic perspectives of masculinity, embodiment and expression. Kilansky 2003 suggests Many who are gay are perceived to be feminine as opposed to being masculine, and fem females are perceived to be masculine as opposed to being feminine. Stonewall FC play against straight opposition in the Middlesex County Football League. With three current teams, the club is thriving. I converse with an array of the players who did not wish to be named, gathering thoughts and experiences, and the general consensus seemed unusually normal. After reading online of hate crime and homophobia, um, homo hysteria, I expected to hear of horrible experiences and however on the contrary the players simply wanted to play football with others of similar sexuality. The verbal abuse was kept to a minimum and it was often mainly dismissed. This news contradicts Anderson's 2000, Heckmer 1999 and Messner's 1993's findings. 
who all conclude westernised competitive sports are highly homophobic, although it is important to realise that these studies were made almost 16 years prior to my conversation with Stonewall's football club, providing concrete evidence that football is more accepted even if it is just in the Middlesex County Football League, thus implying homophobia is almost certainly on the decrease. Double standards in relation to sport refers to male and female athletes being treated differently in regards to their sexuality in sport. The issue I'm going to be focusing on first is the assumption that any female athlete is a lesbian and how this is different to male athletes not being questioned about their sexuality at all. The first point on double standards is that female athletes are encouraged to be seen with their boyfriends and are constantly reminded on how to act like a lady when away from the gym. An example of how the female athletes are pressurised into acting more feminine and to fit into certain images is how they are given free hairstyling and makeup applications. This is before public appearances such as sitting down and eating with the male corporate sponsors whose money supports many WSF programmes. However, reiterating the point of being of there being double standards in sport, the male athletes attending the same dinner and public appearances are offered none of the similar help with their appearance. This therefore suggests and conveys a message that female athletes in their natural state are not acceptable or desirable enough and therefore must be fenned up to compensate for their athletism, as well as implying that female athletes in their natural state will promote that they may be a lesbian because they aren't interested in having makeup or their hair styled. However, on the other hand, male athletes can dress up and take time in their appearance on, and not be questioned about their sexuality at all. Should women have to do all this just to reassure the public that they aren't a lesbian and that although they are a female athlete and have athletic interests, that they actually lead a normal life. I am now going to use two professional sports stars who both play basketball and have both recently come out in the past years. Brittany Grinner, a national basketball player, came out gay in 2013, same as the national basketball player Jason Collins did. However, when Brittany Grinner came out as gay in the sports world and social media, no one covered any sort of article or news on her. However, when Jason Collins came out, he had lots of coverage and publicity, as well as a tremendous amount of acknowledgement for being a strong person, courageous and brave, none of which Brittany Grinner was acknowledged for. Brittany Grinner would have had much more publicity in terms of contribution to winning matches and being a big part of the team when winning than Jason Collins would, but how does that work out that he had more coverage just because he's gay? Therefore, showing the double standards of sexuality and sport as if the media and sports world was equal between female and male athletes, that both of the athletes would have been acknowledged for being courageous, brave and a strong person. This is then backed up by further evidence as men are allowed to express their support and opinion on fellow teammates' sexuality and sport and not have their sexuality questioned at all. An example of this is Chris Clue, who now supports LGBT groups publicly due to Jason Collins coming out. However, straight, fe straight female athletes are not as quick to support team players as publicly as this, as it will cause them to be believed as a lesbian. As Patrick Burke, a founder of You Can Play, a prominent advocacy group for LGBT athletes stated, women in sport have spent their whole lives trying not to fit into the perception of being a lesbian because they play sport. Therefore, publicly speaking out in support of a lesbian athlete, such as Brittany Grinner, proves to be too much of a risk to their reputation that they have trying to be hard. Overall, this research therefore shows that double standards of female athletes and male athletes' sexuality in sport occurs consistently throughout the sporting world and women seem to have the short straw. Homosexuality in youth sport today. Homosexuality in school today is a big issue. Children who realise they are gay or lesbian will go through many problems themselves, let alone with the opinion of the outside world. It will be a long and confusing process, especially in the sporting world, with physical education. 
main issue for homosexuals in school is bullying. Research carried out by our Exceeding Expectations program in Manchester in schools found that 95% of the pupils hear the word gay being used as an insult or something they don't like, and 58% of pupils did not feel that their school was a safe and welcoming place for a lesbian, gay or bisexual pupil. This isn't just a problem for males, females are also on the receiving end, receiving end of this abuse. Name calling and being isolated from what is perceived as a normal society can be can be a tough thing to go for at that age. Stonewall 2008 suggests that 50% of lesbian and bisexual women under the age of 20 have self-harmed in the past year, compared to a 1 in 5 15 generally. 1 in 5 BME lesbian and bisexual women have an eating disorder, compared to 1 in 20 of the general population, and half of lesbian and bisexual women have had negative experiences with healthcare professionals in the last year, and half are not out to their GPs. A book called The School Report the experiences of gay young people in Britain's schools in 2012 stated that 96% of gay pupils hear homophobic remarks such as poof or leza used in school, and almost 99% hear phrases such as that's so gay or you're so gay in school. The children in this book speak of how they hear words such as these used in day to day life and is the norm. The problem is that a lot of children who say these words aren't in fact bullies in the slightest, they just see it as acceptable behaviour because everyone else is doing it. In youth today, nobody realises the extent of the abuse towards those who are gay or lesbian. It can be a very traumatic process being abused as something that occurs naturally. Children of that age wouldn't find it acceptable to do the same thing to someone who, who is of a different ethnicity or race, yet still do it for people's sexuality. A chart in the book states that males seem to get most of the abuse for their sexuality, with a gay male being the highest and a bisexual male in its second. Lesbians and, bis and bisexual females come in at third and fourth and is at a lower end of the scale. This may have something to do with who the bullies are. This may mean that the bullies are majority male abusing those of the same sex or majority female abusing those of the same sex. This is not to say that being homosexual will make everyone dislike you. In fact, a website called Outsports.com speaks of many people who are young sportsmen and women who are telling their story about coming out. Ben Mayer, a 20-year-old cross-country runner, had a passion for running and was in a team full of his friends. The only thing he thought that was holding him back was the fact that he knew he was gay and he didn't want anyone thinking badly of him or changing their attitude towards him. The day that Ben did decide to come out, he was at a team feed for the cross-country runners at a pasta restaurant. Ben was nervous and finally decided to tell everyone. He expected the worst, but his teammates were perfectly fine with it. Many had said they even guessed it beforehand and didn't stop being his friend. The next day, Ben ran a personal best and no longer needed to run from his problems. As common as, 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 common as homosexuality is nowadays, there are still problems to be tackled, such as boys supposedly not allowed to like dance or netball, or girls not allowed to like rugby or things such as football. Things such as these websites and awareness days can really help fight the battle against homosexuality and the problems that it has in day to day life. And hopefully the problems do be resolved. So, is it harder for men or women to be accepted in sport? Firstly, to start to start this debate off, if we have to look closely at sexuality in sport with regards to the difficulties that face boys and young men who are homosexual, then what better place to start by using Brackenridge 2008's view? He states that sport on all accounts associates boys and men with masculine dominance by constructing their identities and readjusting their bodies to align with the dominant perspective of the masculine embodiment and expression. Furthermore, boys in the competitive team sports are also forced to exhibit, value and reproduce traditional notions of masculinity. But also, another interesting fact from Anderson, who has already completed research with 26 men involved in team sports regarding if they felt accepted by their teammates about their sexuality, shows that the recent teenage suicides of, of American gay youth are increasingly high, which reminds us that not all cultures are supportive. Although the research that he has taken is biased towards white middle class athletes and he has not considered the negative impact of being homosexual for other races. After all, in contact sports, men are desired to meet these heterosexualizing standards. That's a good point. Um, I agree with what you said. However, um, you say that boys have to have this masculinity to play sport, whereas you know, I'm talking about homophobic bullying for women or girls in sport, for example, um, especially at a young age through to adult. Um, so homophobic, homophobic bullying is actually targeted, I think. So 
say if you're a boy and you're poor at uh, sport or they're not interested, then they will get bullied for it. Um, so that sort of links to your point. Whereas I think it's the same for girls, because if you're good at sport like as a girl or you're interested in it, then you know, you're going to be perceived as gay. Um, so say if a girl does like sport, um, there's two guys called um, McDonough and Papano, 2008, that said heterosexual women competing in team sports often find their sexualities questioned. Um, which I believe is quite a true statement. Um, and Anderson actually supports this with saying um, this does not occur for men who play in the same sports. So if you use football, for example, a w- woman playing football is perceived as a lesbian, whereas a man playing football is quite masculine. Uh, yeah, no, I totally agree. I mean, as history prevails, um, we live in, well, it states that we've lived in a hegemonic society. Um, although it is not so much the case now, it's difficult for males to be themselves in such a society. Uh, they live in fear of being perceived to be non-macho, um, of being gay, and um, it's non-masculine, such as Tom Bosworth, um, an Olympic race walker who competed at the Worlds 2015. When he was 15 or 16, he decided it would then be a good time for him to come out as gay. Um, and it was, well, he has said, stated that it was the worst thing he ever done because he then received abuse. He, received, he was called a dyke, a uh, queer, and he also really then was had his head put through a window. Um, and I think for being a male, um, you also have the masculine side, whereas males say no and they get physical. So it can be difficult for a male, especially teenagers, because teenagers can be really nasty, as Tom said, and they don't realize what they're saying. It's just ignorance. Mm. Um, and being a gay male is perceived to be a weakness in some cases, and is the opposite of being masculine. Just expanding on Gemma's point, um, I think that over time, uh, looking into like, research and looking over how things have changed from the 80s until now, there's a lot of, for women, it's very tricky to be involved with more masculine sports, to say like football and rugby and stuff, and not be branded immediately, assumed as being homosexual. So there's a lot of organisations that describe like, the gay sports phenomenon. Pronga um, 1990 explains that, um, makes it clear that gay culture is a response to homosexual oppression. So it's becoming a big thing that for women, they f- like they feel the need from society that they need to be part of their own culture because of this sort of situation where they get called things or maybe felt as if they can't take part in male sports. They've sort of begun to set up their own individual thing like is that really right should they be separate to sort of what straight people just because they're assumed of being like it's not very fair is it so then they're like being separate to straight people Uh, however that's a very good point Uh, it's also important to recognize that some sportsmen have had a more positive experience on announcing that they're homosexual including that tom daly of course who was one of the many outgoing faces of the 2012 olympics in fact, only five months after he published his YouTube video about his sexuality, his popularity has skyrocketed, and now he's signed a number of big deals, as well as being the face of the Adidas Nier range for men that was reportedly earning him a sponsorship deal of over £300,000, and he's also been nominated at <coughs> the Gay Officers. However, in contrast to Tom, who's an individual sportsman, Justin Fashionu, a black professional footballer who also announced his sexuality through the media in 1990, did definitely not get the same positive response. Fashion who faced a hostile reception from players, the fans and the media, and even within his own family, with the final straw being when he faced charges of an alleged sexual assault on a teenage boy in the USA, which led him to commit suicide in 1998. Similarly, in an article with Ellis Cashmore and Jamie Cleland, in which they got over 3,500 responses from June 2010 to October 2010 from football fans and professionals in the game regarding their views towards gay footballers, the results that they came back with were really quite shocking, and these results show you how football fans are strongly against homophobia, with 93% of all ages stating there is no place for homophobia within football. So as a boy, why would you announce your homosexuality within team sports? To expand on that point, um, for women actually, going back into the 80s, um, visibility for lesbian women did come around a lot earlier than men, but not in a positive way. So quite negative linked with um, your point there. Um, so Festival 1996 goes on to explain how um, two very well-known sportswomen, so B- uh, Billy King and Martina Navratilova, <laughs> um, 
So they were actually outed in the media for being homosexual. And with that, they lost everything. So they lost um, their um, places in their sports teams. They had setbacks. They lost all their sponsorship. Um, they were branded as being awful and evil. Um, and then King actually lost her presidency. Um, pregnancy yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because of the sexual perversion okay. that's exactly what was put on it the sexual perversion so just for being homosexual that she's seen as some sort of pervert so it's very very negative way of being of somebody or people finding out about your sexuality losing everything but they actually became which is more positive side they actually became activists for um LGBT, um, but obviously in that time, going back into the 80s, there would have been no sort of role models back then to actually come out, even though they become activists, it would have been very tricky for them. So, can I just add to that? Yeah, point? so you've sort of spoken about the historical yeah. side of the stigma, um, whereas I think the media and sport media nowadays, because um, obviously his historically it was ignored homosexual athletes, because mm. um, there's a massive stigma in the 80s. Um, but I believe that there's not many role models for the ladies nowadays. Um, like you said, you've got Tom Daly, Gareth Thomas, who are massive like, in the yeah. media. Um, whereas, to be honest, we struggle. I know we've got, say, Nicola Adams, who's a black woman, and you know she won a gold medal at the Olympics. So yeah. that's, that's a massive achievement. But to us, we don't really see much of her in the media. Um, so Lenski, 2013, came up with a quote saying, um, there was very little amount of sport media coverage of homosexuality, likely due to the lack of openly gay athletes in popular media sports throughout the world, especially women. Um, so obviously, like Nicola does boxing, whereas yeah. I don't really know of many women who do boxing, for example. No. Um, but to add to that, um, Keen and Vincent, 2014, because obviously I'm speaking more recent research, said that most sport media still frame heterosexuality, yet the advent of the interest and social media has provided more challenges to the traditional mainstream media represent, representation of sport and sexualities. So the thoughts nowadays are completely contrasted to what yeah. they were in, like historically. Yeah, I Sorry, I've just got an yeah, example yeah, to give you. Um, so uh, this is an extract from the Telegraph newspaper 2013. Uh, it's an interview with Jason Collins, who's an NBA player in America. Um, his question was based on why it's harder for men to come out as gay. Um, but within that, he um, he said quite a big point where I think it's a contrast to women. Um, so he said that male athletes coming out is pretty much equals a big announcement in the media, um, whereas women face an expectation that their athleticism implies that they're more masculine and unsurprisingly LGBT because they're not meeting the norm of a woman. Um, so for example, Brittany Grinner is, is a female NBA player, came out a month before Jason Collins, so they played the same sport, yet the media uproar of Collins was massive, but there's barely any of Brittany. Uh, yeah, no, I totally agree. I think um, I think it can be difficult for men because there's that constant fear of being perceived to be feminine, and they sort of face the prejudices and the stigmas which are always around. Um, as you said in the eighties, etc. And I think it was harder in that era too because um, people were less less willing to sort of turn a blind eye. They were there were that yeah. last year, and they were less open. And I think ignorance was a lot higher at yeah. this sort of period. Um, I think overall, I think. Men face it because of the being macho, being strong, being tough, and being like a sort of a manly figure um, around sort of children and stuff. I think men sort of struggle to admit and be themselves. Um, I think whereas when you're in school, it's it's a similar thing. Uh, there's like hidden homo hysteria. There's hidden homo um, people being worried, etc. Yeah. Uh, and being in the society we live in now, things have changed. Whereas. Ten years ago, it was a lot more difficult. Yeah. Than to do. In fact, just to add to your point, uh, confidence for a boy plays a huge part in announcing if you're homosexual for a male, as proven through Tom Daly, Tom Daly, for example. Yet research from Griffin, 1998, suggested that the environment for a gay athlete to declare his sexual preferences was intimidating and hostile, which is another huge factor why males may not reveal their sexuality. Although there are now openly gay players in sport, most gay professional athletes choose to disguise their sexuality throughout their playing career especially within team sports. For example, Thomas Hitzelsberger, ex-German and international 
footballer, um, Aston Villa footballer, sorry, didn't reveal his sexuality until, until he required. Finally, to finish this debate, Gordon Taylor from the Professional Footballers Association was quoted saying that the Premier League didn't think homophobia was a big enough issue to tackle and was not ready for such a campaign. To round that off, I think um, in Great Britain overall, we've sort of, you know, like accepted homosexuals, who they are. Yeah, definitely. And I don't think it's definitely long, less. Um, a long way. The support is unreal. Um, but I've actually got a statistic okay. from the US, so you can see it's going worldwide. Yeah, definitely. That actually only 12% of the people surveyed of the US sports fans said that they were less likely to to support their favourite athlete if he or she came out gay. So because there's such a low percentage it shows that you know the support is mm. greater. So there is one thing to highlight though that even though it's massively improving throughout the West, that th throughout the world there are still many issues not only for men, uh, not only for women, but men also. Um, so for example, um, Yudi Simile, who played for national women's football team. In, um, she was a black lesbian, that's how they referred to her as. Um, she played for them between 1977 to 2008. Uh, she was an LGBT activist. Um, just for being a homosexual woman within that country, it wasn't accepted. It wasn't accepted by people um, for her either being an activist and she was brutally murdered. She was, um, as they put it, um, corrective rape, um, gang rape. Um, she was stabbed countless amount of times. She was brutally, brutally killed, as I said. And that's just because of her sexuality. So even though it's important, we still obviously have points where it's found difficult for both men and women to come out it's important to highlight and think about um, people elsewhere, like to do with their race, to do with their religion, it's very, it's not, it fashion, yeah, it's not, as shown, yeah, fashion, yeah, through fashion, it's not, it's not fully there yet, it's not come. Yeah, it's, it's well on its way, I mean, um, yeah. discriminatory behaviour is on, it is mm -hmm. becoming a an anomaly now, it's very minimal because I think there was a British study and it found that people in their 60s, um, the average age of coming out was 37, yeah. whereas people yeah. now in their 30s, it was 21, and now people between the ages of 18 and 24 to 17, so it's actually slowly coming out, people are coming out at a much younger age, so, so, yeah, so how much theory is on its way out, we'd like to hope. Yeah. Negative preconceived ideas, stereotypes and attitudes are slowly becoming positive. Historically, people lived fearing homo stereo. However, with progressive inclusion from teams such as Stonewall Football Club, players like Gareth Thomas and the increase in media coverage, the perception of one's sexuality will become less of an issue. Homophobia is on the decrease. Media coverage is on the increase. Barriers in sport are becoming fewer and far between.